Okay, Shabbat Shalom everybody, this is Hamelech Ben Yaakov of the World Alliance of Karaim, and we are going to be doing our Torah study now, our Shabbat Torah study in the Book of Numbers, the beginning of the Book of Numbers, Sefer of Bab Mibad, and uh, let's see what we could uh, what we can find out. So, here is set up. <coughs> Okay, so here we are. I am outside today because uh, there are a number of guests over the house, so it just makes it easier to be outside. Uh, so uh, um, enjoy the beautiful lemon tree and orange tree uh, behind me. And let me take this silly thing off. And there we go. Uh, let me do a quick sound check. Can you guys hear me? Ben and Ariella, can you hear me? Yep, we've got you. Check. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. All right, so uh, we're going to get going in the book of Numbers. We're going to be starting at the beginning of the book of Numbers. We'll read through uh, the Parsha in Hebrew first, which goes from Numbers 1 through 4, 1, 1 through 420. So basically, we're talking about four chapters, Numbers 1, and uh, then it ends in the middle of four. Okay, so let's start in number one, and I'm going to read through in Hebrew. I won't do much commentary or translation, just read through so we can get through the Parsha and cover it. We can go back and do some more detailed commentary and investigation. So here we go. We're in Numbers chapter one, uh, verse one. Let me just make sure this is working. It should be. I think so. Okay. And <coughs> we have Why the Bear Yahweh and Moshe Bamidbar Sinai Behel Moed Behad La Hodish Hashini Vishana Hashinit Litzitam Me Eretz Misraim Lemor Seu et Rosh Kol Adat Ben Israel Mishpahotle Mishpahotam Lebet Avotam Bamispar Shemot Kol Zahar Ligulatam Miben Oops Miben Esrim Shana Wa Maala Koryotse Tava by Israel Tikadu Otam Litziv Otam Ata Wa Aharon Wa Itrem Ihu Ish Ish Lamate Ish Rosh Lebet Avotau, who? Okay, verse five. Oops. Wa ele shemot ha anashim, a sheria amdu, itrem. Le reuven, eritur ben, shede, ur. Le shim on, shilemu el. Ben. Le yuda, shon ben, ami dadav. La yis sahar, nit tan el ben zuar, lizvulun eli av ben helon. One second, I want to see one thing. Okay, verse 10. Livne Yosef, le Ephraim, eli shama ben amihud, le menashe, gamli el ben pida zur. Okay. There's going to be a test on all of these names afterwards, so make sure you remember them. Levin Yomim, Abidan ben Yid Oni, Vidan Ahi Azer ben 
Ami Shaddai, le Asher Pagriel ben Aharon, Aharno, Aharon, le God Eliasaf ben Dioel. Verse 15, le Naphtali, Ahira ben Ainan, ele Kiru e Kiru e Haida, Nisi e Matot, Avotam, Rashe al Fais, Rael him. Okay, so we have here the those are the princes of the tribes. <clears throat> um, one second. So uh, you've all heard of a Shlemiel, right? And Shlomazel. Well, there's there you go. In verse six, there's Shlemiel. Shilumiel is uh, what I'm not an expert in Yiddish, but if I'm not mistaken. That became in you know Yiddish pronunciation Shlomil. Uh, I don't know why they chose his name as Shlomil, but there we go. Shlomil is the head of, of uh, Shimon, is the head of the tribe of Simeon. I don't know if we find Shlomazel anywhere, but, but we definitely have Shlomil. And I don't know if we find Hafenpefer Horforated or whatever. Okay, reference back to, well, if you understand, you understand. Okay, so... Um, Verse 17, so now we go through numbers. That's why it's the book of numbers. There's a lot of numbers. So starting here in verse 17, it's very repetitive and a little bit uh, boring, but important, right? They're doing a census. Moshe et ha'anoshim ha'ele asher mekbu b'shemot. Wa'et kol ha'kilu b'had l'chodesh ha'shini. Oyit Ladu Al Mish Bahotam Levet Avotam Bamispar Shemot Miben Asrim Shana Wa Maala Le Gul Gilotam Kasher Siwa Tahwe El Et Moshe Waif Kadem Bamidbar Sinai Verse twenty all those who are going out uh, to battle into the army, right? So this, the census, uh, inevitably, whenever they're doing censuses, sensei, Senso, sensum, sensos, I don't know, sensei, uh, I guess it's a Latin word, so it would be sensei, actually, censuses, uh, it's usually uh, doing a census uh, to uh, uh, to go out to battle, right, and uh, we see this mentioned other times in the Tanakh, uh, sometimes with a lot of trouble, uh, David took a census of the people of Israel, and uh, this was considered a sin by, by God, by Yahweh. So uh, David was uh, was punished. He was given uh, three choices. This is the end of end of the book of the of the uh, the second uh, book of Samuel to Samuel. Um, we uh, also see that uh, uh, Gideon, one of the judges of Israel, uh, numbered his army at thirty thousand, and God decided that was too much, and uh, and so he made him choose out of the thirty thousand three hundred who were the ones that went out to battle we also have a promise that uh that the uh the numbers of israel will be so great that they cannot be numbered they'll be as great as the, the uh the uh amount of sand on the seashore and, and as great as the uh, amount of stars in the sky right and they will not be able to be numbered so this thing about numbering israel and the issue behind it is uh well let's talk about it later maybe i'll get some ideas from other people Okay, Upiko Dehem. So wait, where were we? I better go back to here. Verse 20. Oops. Why who benere oven behori Israel? A tol dotam. Le mishpahotam, levet avotam, but Miss Parshemot le rul gilotam, call the Zahar mi ben Asrim Shana, wa maala, call it Savah, Piku Dehem, le mate, ruven, shishava, arbaim, elef, hamish, meot. So 46,500. 
for Ruvain. Now we have Shimon, Simeon, Divnei Shimon, Tovdotam, Lemishpachotam, Lebeit Avotam, Pikudau, Bamisbar, Shemot, Likul Gilotam, Kol Zahar, Miben Asrim Shana, Wa Meala, Kol Yetzei Tzava, Pikudehem, Lemate Shimon, Tisha, or Hamishim Elef, Ushrosh Meot. So, uh, Tisha Hamishim Elef, fifty nine thousand three hundred. So uh, we have 45,650. Uh, next. Livnei Yehuda. Tov datam li mishpachotam li beit avotam ba mispar shemot mi ben asrim shana wa ma'ala kol yitzay tzava pikudehem li matei Yehuda ar ba'a wa shibim elef wa shesh me'ot. 74,600. Livnei Yisachar. So here we have uh, So let's see here. So first of all, let's try to figure something out. What's the order that these tribes are being presented in? It's not the order of birth, right? Ruvain and Shimon are the first two born, first two, uh, uh, the first two born, and uh, then we have, uh, but the, the third born is not God. The third born is Yehuda, right? So, the second sons of. Jacob, let's get the entire order here. Yeah. Is this thing not working? There we go. Jacob. Uh -oh. So, children, 12 sons, 12 tribes of Israel, birth, uh, Jacob's sons, two, 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 birth. Uh, okay. Go to 12 tribes of Israel. I'm sorry, Levi was third and Judah was fourth. So, <coughs> um, no, Yehuda was third. This is not in order. No, I'm sorry, Levi was third. I don't know why I thought Judah was third. Okay, so here's the order. Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zvulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, Naftali, Joseph, and Benjamin. And Benjamin. Um, let me just make sure that's in correct order. Here we go. Ruben, Shimon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naftali, God, Asher, Yisachar, Zvulin, Joseph, and Benjamin. Okay, so there we go. So, uh, so we see here that it's not in the order, right? Levi, well, Levi's not counted, but after that should be uh, uh, Yehuda, and instead we have God, right? So God is actually the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh born. Then we have Yisachar, etc., etc. Okay, and then Yosef. We know Yosef is the second to last born, and then Binyamin was the last born. So what is the order here? Well, let's try to figure it out. Maybe there's something to do, and I don't have the answer here. I have not prepared the answer in advance, so I'm trying to figure this out as we go along. So let's see here. Maybe it's the numbers somehow. Well, let's look at the numbers and see if that works out. So the first one that's listed is Shisha, forty-six thousand. 
I'll just count the thousands. So this is 46,000. And here we have 59,000. Here we have uh, 45,000. Here we have Automobile Shivim 74,000. So it's jumping all over the place. So it's not the numbers. We're not going in the numbers either. Right? So perhaps it is the positions of the children of Israel as they camp around the tabernacle. Let's look at that. Okay. So here's a schematic of that. And that's a bad one. Let's do it again. Okay, good enough to see. There we go. Okay. So Shimon, so what's mentioned here? So we have Ruven, Shimon, and God. Here we have Ruven, Shimon, and God. Then after that, we have mentioned Yehuda, Issachar, and Zvulun. Yehuda, Issachar, and Zvulun. Okay. Uh, that's working so far. Then we have uh, Ephraim, Menashe, and Binyamin, basically the three sons of Rachel, or two grandsons, one son of Rachel. Does that work? Ephraim, Menashe, and Binyamin, so far so good. And then by process of elimination, the last three are going to be Don, Asher, and Naftali. Don, Asher, and Naftali. So there we have it there. So we've decoded it. Um, so then we can ask another question. Why were these uh, different ones paired together? Okay. Well, um, hmm. Benjamin, Menashe, and Ephraim, those are the three, those are the three, uh, uh, sons or descendants of Rachel. Okay. Ruben and Shimon are daughters, I'm sorry, sons of of, uh, those are uh, the first two sons of Leah. God. Let's go back and do this. The sons of Jacob in order. But then also, let's get the family tree here. Uh, one second. Let's do it this way. Sons of Jacob, not in order. So now we want to see. So we could do like this, maybe. There we go. There's a little family tree. So God is a descendant of, or is a son of Zilpa, okay, who is Leah's servant. So then we have here once again, what do we say? Reuven, Shimon, and God, who is number seven and who is a descendant of Zilpa. So Reuven, Shimon are number one, and then God is number seven. Okay, fair enough. Let's look a little bit more. Then we have uh, Judah, Issachar, and Zvulun. So Issachar and Zvulun uh, are sons of Leah. Okay. And then with them, so Issachar, Zvulun, and then we have Judah, who's also a son of Leah. Leah. So we have Judah, Issachar, and Zvulun. Okay. So those are all sons of Leah. <coughs> and then finally we have Dan, Naftali, and Asher. So Asher, so those are three sons of concubines. So Asher is uh, a son of Zilpah, and Dan and Naftali are sons of Bilha, Rachel's 
So I don't see any particular pattern there. It's all over the place. I'm not sure why they're paired up that way. Maybe we could think about it. So uh, once again, start vision mass. Those are three the three actual sons of Rachel. They're all together. Not sons. Prime or grand descendants of Rachel. So Shimon Rubain. These are the first two born. The, the Firstborn of of uh, Jacob, yeah, and then God is the son of Kibines, the son of Zilpah. Okay, right. Well, at least at least Reuben and Shimon are together. They're usually paired together. Okay, so that's one and two, and then son of Zilpah. Here we have uh, Judah, Issachar, and Zvulun. So these are all sons of Leah. Oops, so many windows open. Just trying to get a little crazy here. So these are all sons of Leah, Judah, Issachar, and Zvulun. Right? So, I don't know. So here we have three sons of Rachel. Here on the uh, west side, we have three sons of the three sons of Rachel. Here we have three sons of Leah. So on the east and west side um, are only sons of... Uh, there are no sons of concubines. Right? On the south... We have two sons of Leah and one and one of the concubines. In the north, we have all concubines. <coughs> sons of concubines, I should say. Right? Here, I close this window. All right. So, uh, so Dan, Asher, and Naftali, Dan, Asher, and Naftali are all sons of concubines. So that takes, so those are the, the, those are the other three sons of the concubines that were not mentioned. So I don't know. I don't really see a pattern except, <coughs> Um, Shimon and Ruven are usually grouped together because they were born one after the other. Ephraim and Manasseh are usually grouped together for obvious reasons, right? They're, they're the two sons of Joseph, and Benjamin is the other son of Rachel, so that's an, a, an obvious grouping. Uh, Yisachar and, and Zvulun are grouped together because they were, again, born one after the other, right? Yisachar was number nine, Zvulun was number ten. And then Judah, I don't know why, where they got him from. Number three. Okay, and uh, Shimon and Ruben are usually grouped together because they're one and two. Uh, Dan and, and uh, Naftali are usually together because they're the two sons of of Bilha. So there, Bilha. So there are some natural groupings, but then there seems to be an extra one in each one of them at least, right? So Shimon Ruben, where does God come from? Who knows? Okay, why? Did, I guess maybe they didn't have another place to stick him. Uh, Issachar and Zvulun. Okay. That makes sense. And then Judah, I guess he's not usually paired with anyone. Oh, he's paired usually with Levi because those are three and four, but Levi's not counted. They're in the, uh, I'm sorry, they are counted, but they're in, in the uh, in the center here, right? I mean, they're not around the tabernacle. So I don't know. I, I don't see a, uh, a natural uh, reason for it. We could think about it more, but one thing we do see is the order is in line with the uh, with the positions around the tabernacle. And Shabbat Shalom, Ricky and April Scurry. So once again, if we go back to over here, so we have Reuben, Shimon, God. So we're starting here with the south side moving from east to west. So Reuben, Shimon, God. Those are these three. Okay. Yehuda, Yisachar, and Zvulun. So after that, we're moving from here down from the on the uh, east side from the top down to the bottom. So Yehuda Yisachar and Zvulun. So first we had Reuven, Shimon, God. Now Yehuda Yisachar Zvulun. So we went from the south side to the east side. Okay. Then after that, we've got Yosef. Well, we have Ephraim, Menashe, and Binyamin. So then we go to this side, the west side, and we're moving up. Ephraim, Menashe, Binyamin. Here we move down. Judah, Yisrael, Zvulun. So we went south side from right to left, okay, from west, from east to west. Then we went. West side, no, east side, 
from north to south. Now we're going west side from south to north. And then we have Don, Asher, and Naftali. So here we're going north side from west to east. Okay, so one other pattern we see here is that on the south side, we went east to west. On the north side, we went west to east. On the east side, we went north to south. And on the west side, we went south to north. So we're always going basically clockwise, right? And once again, it was first uh, south. Wait, no, I forgot the order. It was first south. So on any given side, we're moving clockwise. Okay. So south. Uh, then was Yehuda Yisrael Zvulun. It was south, west, east, and north. South, west, east, and north. Right? Southwest, east, and the last was north. Correct? Don, Asher, and Natali. Right. North. Okay. So again, south, west. So south, moving clockwise. West, moving clockwise. East, moving clockwise. Right? And then north moving clockwise. Okay, so what could that mean? Well, there's a couple of other things to point out. First of all, we see that uh, Ephraim, Menashe, and Binyamin mentioned in that order. Okay, ah, so let's look on any given side. So on the, on the, on the, on the uh, west side, Ephraim, Menashe, and Binyamin, if we move clockwise from Ephraim to Menashe and Binyamin, well, are they in order of birth? Mm, no, definitely not, because uh, Menashe and Ephraim were <coughs> born after after uh, um, Binyamin, right? Because they're grandsons, uh, and Binyamin was born before Yosef went down to uh, to Egypt, because Binyamin was born as Rachel died uh, on the way to Ephrat. So. So definitely Binyamin is older than Ephraim and Manasseh. We also know that, that Manasseh is older than Ephraim, right? Because we had that whole thing in the end of Genesis where Yaakov switched the hands and then Joseph said, no, we shouldn't do that. But Yaakov said, no, this one's going to be greater, meaning Ephraim's going to be greater than Manasseh, which is in fact what happened sometimes when in the, when the Tanakh speaks about the northern kingdom, it, it just mentions it as Ephraim rather than Israel. The head of uh, the capital city of the northern kingdom was Samaria, which was in, in the hill country of Ephraim. Okay, so it's definitely not an order of birth. Is it an order of importance? Maybe you could claim that. So we go Ephraim, Menashe, Binyamin. That would work. Ephraim and Menashe are um, are uh, <clears throat> are uh, what you call are uh, um, the sons of Yosef. So that basically Yosef having been Yaakov's favorite son, which is what he was. You can't spin it any other way, right? That was Yaakov basically made Yosef the firstborn. Well, he was the firstborn of Rachel, right? However, we do have a mitzvah in the Torah that the firstborn of the, if you have two wives and one is, and uh, and and uh, you cannot, uh, <clears throat> uh, and the, the son of the uh, hated one, the disliked one, or the unfavored one, really would be a better translation, is the firstborn. You cannot take his birthright away from him. You not, cannot take his portion away from him. But this, you could claim this is before the Torah was given, so that's exactly what happened in both in the case of uh, Yosef and in the case of, no, not in the case of Prime Menashe. Uh, Yosef, really the, the, the firstborn of Yaakov was Ruvain, but the birthright was essentially taken away from him and given to Yosef. Okay, so an excuse was made to strip it from Ruvain that he slept with uh, Yaakov's concubine, Bilha. Uh, an excuse was made to strip yeah. it from... Hello. Yeah, Ariella, did you want to say something? I was just going to say what you just said that that um, the the firstborn of Leah had to lose Reuben had to lose his position because of what he did. Right. Yeah. So then he defaulted mm -hmm. to Rachel's son, I guess. Well, it shouldn't default to Rachel's son because the, the second and third born after that were were uh, were Shimon and and, uh, and Levi, right? 
Right. Except that, that was how do you do you where do we have an example in the Torah of it moving to the second and the third and the fourth if the others defaulted? Well, uh, I guess you could say in the case of Ephraim, well, there there's only two. So but yeah. uh, it would seem logical that it would now move to the second born. But then Reuven and uh, I mean, Shimon and Levi were basically stripped of it because of right. it doesn't mention explicitly, but. When Yaakov is giving the blessings in the end of Genesis, he, he uh, speaks about uh, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, oh, what's the exact wording? Uh, uh, no, I'm just getting the words wrong. But basically he says that they, they were there, that the, the violence that they used, which the, the implication is in Shechem, um, is, uh, are, is the reason that, uh, that they are to be scattered in Israel, so that in a sense he's taking away the birthright from them. Okay. It seems it seems that it passed to Judah when Judah actually came up to Joseph in that in that interview, but the, when he didn't know that Joseph was Joseph, and afterwards his confession and his taking responsibility, it seems that from then on Judah had the firstborn. Uh, perhaps I don't Maybe know. Maybe not. Look if it was exactly the time, but you're definitely it's clear. That among the sons of Rachel, Judah is the dominant one. There's no doubt about it. Judah, sons of Rachel. You mean the sons of Leah? I'm sorry. Among the sons of Leah, I meant <laughs> Judah is the uh, yeah. is the dominant one, without a doubt. And that's why uh, ultimately the, the eternal kingship of over Israel, of the kingship of da the kingdom of David, was was uh you know was the descendant of Judah, tribe of Judah. Right? Yep. And you also have the uh, uh, the the blessing that Jacob gives to Judah. Um, saying uh, he will he will uh, hold the staff and the and the lawmaker will never depart from him, right? So there's, there's this implication, clearly already in in the time when Yaakov is giving the blessings that Judah is the dominant one, right? Reuven, yep. Shimon, and Levi are are deemed you know not worthy, and then after that you have Judah. He's the fourth born of Leah, right? Yes, and he 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 received at his deathbed anyway. He seems to receive the the power over the the tribes, right? Uh, exactly right. So, but Judah was not really the firstborn. He he did not receive the birthright. Really, the real birthright was received by Joseph. Joseph was the was the favored son of the favored wife. In fact, the only wife that Yaakov was wanted. The rest were kind of thrust upon him. Uh, he didn't ask for them, and he didn't he didn't want them. Right. Uh, in every single case, in the case of Leah, we know that Lavan thrust Leah upon, upon uh, basically tricked Yaakov into taking Leah. And then, in the case of uh, in the case of the two concubines, it was never it was uh, the wives who basically forced the concubines upon 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 Jacob. Jacob did not even initiate the idea. It was the wives who wanted to build children through their their concubines. So, in a certain sense, it's, it makes sense that Joseph should be the the considered the firstborn because he's the the only one, he's the only son of of the only wife. I'm sorry, he's the, the firstborn of the only wife that Yaakov really wanted. But, and that's why he loved him so much. Clearly, right? He, he was he was his real, shall we say? I hate to use the word spiritual. It's such a misused and, and overused word. But he was kind of his spiritual firstborn son. And essentially, uh, Joseph does get the status of firstborn. And the proof of that is we know that the firstborn gets a double portion. And Joseph is the only son that, that is broken into two tribes. That's the double portion right there. That's why we never see a tribe of Joseph. We always see a tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh. That's that's Joseph's double portion as the firstborn. That's kind of the proof that he was he was given the firstborn. The, and uh, it's interesting too, Malik, that, that yeah. Joseph has the whole side on the is that the west side? The east side. Yeah, was, on the west side, he has the whole strength of the west side of the encampment where the sons of Leah are split up and the con with the concubines. Well, the east side and the uh, south side. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh that's right. Uh well Judah, Yisachar, and Zvulun are the three sons. The only other place where there are three sons of that's the three sons of Leah. But one thing I will point out is the west side is the most important side because that's the side of the Kodesh Ketoshim, that's the side of the Holy of Holies, right? It oh, is, wow. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. We we even see the tabernacle here. But in the surely center. the uh, entrance would be more important, though, uh, for the guarding. Well, the thing is, when you enter, you're, you enter on the east side, but you walk to the west. 
So it's as you're walking, way. so as you're walking into the courtyard from east to west, first you encounter the the altar, and then behind it you're gonna can encounter the the kior, the the uh, sink, and then you get to the holy, the kadosh. That's where you have the uh, lampstand, the, the menorah, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then finally, if you continue west, then you get to the, the kadosh kadoshim, where the ark of the covenant is, with the ark cover, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So when you're praying towards towards God, when you walk into His house and you're walking towards Him, you're walking from east to west. Yeah. So mm-hmm. West is really the direction that you're facing, and, okay. and so when you're when you're facing God, you're also facing the, the the direction of Benjamin, Menashe, and Ephraim as they're camped around the tabernacle. Okay. So I, I would think it's it's that that I, I would I would say that it's kind of clear that the west side is is uh, is the most important. In the yeah, area. and actually, when you look at the numbers, um, it, it's a smaller amount on the west side. Um, which is the sacred site, but the the actual mm-hmm. entrance to it has the largest number. Is it the largest? I think it's yeah, possibly yeah. It looks like the, the largest number of uh, contingents. Judah right. had the most, seventy six thousand. Yeah, right. So you're looking at about a hundred and eighty, hundred and eighty five thousand. Yeah. There. In fact, we have the tally right here on the left. Camp of Judah, one eighty six four hundred. Right over here. On yeah. The right. So, oh yeah so, so yeah so it is actually the the, the uh, highest number um mm-hmm. on the open side of the tabernacle right. right which makes sense because you don't want them uh, entry mm-hmm. oh that's an interesting point like in other words they would be the guards to the entrance of the uh... yeah. oh that's interesting but you look at the north and south and they're roughly the same right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, it would make sense, honestly, that Benjamin, Menashe, and Ephraim, the west side would be less because Menashe and Ephraim are, it's really only two tribes, really Benjamin and Joseph, right? So, yeah. yeah. And it really actually works out because, okay, so all around, you know, the, the, uh, all the other sides are approximately 150. Okay, 180 is a little bit more than 150, but approximately in the 150 range. And the west yeah. side is in the 100 range because okay. you're skipping a generation with Menashe and Ephraim, right? So, <laughs> so that would be uh, the open really... side where you actually enter has got the maximum number of uh, combatants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, I never thought about that. Uh, that is an interesting mm-hmm. point, without a doubt. But uh, so, but there we have it. So uh, that's the so uh, that's the pattern of the encampment. Uh, besides the west side, which is clearly, I think the reason again is the west represents the direction of that when you're facing God. But uh, cool. right. But aside mm-hmm. from that, I have no idea except to say that um, Judah, the dominant one, is also on the of Leah is also on the east side. And then along with it, you have Yisachar and Zvulun, who were never, you know, they were never like, you know, given a, a, a zing by Yaakov, right? They weren't like rejected. Shimon and Reuven were rejected, and they're on the south. So maybe the south is considered like the worst side in the Torah. Well, it, it would be the worst side as well, because if, you, if you're traveling with the north side as the lead, the south side is the most vulnerable mm-hmm. uh, from a military perspective. Right, uh, yes. the, the rear guard. Yeah, the rear guard is the most vulnerable. Uh, and uh, uh, we actually saw that with uh, the attack by uh, um, Amalek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. But let's see, when they travel, are they... Uh, there's a certain order, right? But I don't remember offhand what the order is that they travel in. Mm. Yeah, that'd be good. I to don't check know if it's an outside yeah. that's traveling I first. Find that out later. <laughs> that, that's but, in chapter two, I think. Yeah, that comes a little um, bit later. We might say something since Judah's the lawgiver. Um, mm. In the the throne of judgment, should be on the east side. Um, from the fact that. Um, before anybody comes in, they have to be judged worthy. I don't mm-hmm. know. I'm just thinking that might have something to do with it. Um, mm-hmm. You've got Judah 
not only in a military uh, number of soldiers, but also in the capacity to judge and to um, make decisions. So mm -hmm. maybe that's important to have that on the east side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very possibly. It, it definitely seems that the east side and the west side are getting the, the more important children. Okay, mm -hmm. It's a horrible thing to say more important, less important children, but that's the bottom line. In the Torah, there's definitely a, yeah. a hierarchy among the children. And uh, uh, but the east side and the west side are getting are getting the uh, the more important ones. The north side is all concubine children of the concubines, and mm -hmm. the right side are are two, you know, dinged, you know, children, the ones that got you know dinged over the head by Yaakov, you know, rejected, yeah. and another and another son of a concubine. So the north and south are the least important of the of the twelve children, or I don't know, least important, but the because Ruvain was the firstborn, is the firstborn, but the, the rejected ones, basically. The rejected ones. So if definitely the west side is, is the top. The east side is next in importance. I would say probably it could go either way, right? Well, let's see what the order is in the counting, right? So again, the order in the counting is, we said, so we're starting actually with the, yeah, we're starting with the, with the, uh, um, well, it does say here in verse 20, So it does mention that he was the firstborn. So it is starting with the firstborn, giving him that honor. But uh, it's starting with the south. Then we're going to the to the east. Then we're going to the west. And then finally, we're going to the, the, the north. Don Asher Natali. So south, west. Wait a second. What was it again? South. West, no, oh, south, right. east, west, north, south, east, west, north, S E W N. I'll remember sewn, like sewing, south, east, west, north. So let's go the thing again. So that's the order that's mentioned south, east, west, north. I don't know. That doesn't, that, that order doesn't make any sense to me why it's mentioned in that particular order, except maybe this is something to do with the number. South is the most, east, no, south is not the most. South is in the middle. East is the most. West is the least. I don't know. Yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no order to that. But uh, so, uh, um, but, but, uh, um, what was I going to say? I was just about to say something. I forgot what it was. Right. But we, we, we definitely do see that, um, that uh, the, the, uh, the, the. Uh, the order in which it's mentioned is is the same order, at least side by side. At least side by side, uh, the uh, is the order of the encampment around the the tabernacle. That we could definitely see here in numbers. So I don't know. We should just keep an eye on it as we go forward and uh, see if we can find any other patterns. But I think for now, we've been able to pull out some of the patterns here. You know. So, uh, all right, Ariella. You have anything else you want to add? No, I'm just curious to see how this unfolds. Yeah, same here. Same here. Oops, I just closed history. There we go. Okay, so all right, so let's move on. Um, I'm actually, I think what I'm going to do is just kind of skip down to line 44 because we've kind of covered all, all the stuff. And uh, so here in line 44, And so here in line 44, So, uh, um, Okay. Uh, verse 45, Okay. So then they give the total in line in verse 46. So 603,550. Uh, and I remember uh, adding this up, testing that once in the past, and it does actually add up. So if you add up all of these numbers, it does come out to, uh, to this number, which is... Uh, 603,550, right? Which is approximately 600,000, right? Which is that 600,000 is mentioned uh, in when the Israelites leave Egypt, right? 600,000. Should translate as foot soldiers. Okay, 
in the chat. Let's see. Um, okay, so now it's numbers 1121. So numbers 1121. Here I am among 600,000 men on foot, and you say I will give them meat to eat for a whole month, right? So that's the approximation of the 600,000. <clears> okay, so let's move on. Verse 47. <laughs> So the Levites were not counted among them. But Yisabel Yahuel Moshe Lemor Ach Et Mate Lewi Lot Tifkod Where Rosham Lot Tisa Bitoch Bnei Israel. So you're not going to count the Levites. Where Ata Afkred Et Halivuim Al Mishkan Ha'edut Where Al Kol Kelav Where Al Kol Asher Lo Hema Yisu Et Mishkan Where Kol Kelav Where Hem Ish Aretuhu Where Saviv Le Le Mishkan Yahanu. So basically, um, they're not going to be counted. Uh, they're not going to be counted among the children of Israel. They're counted separately, and they camp around the uh, tabernacle. In a sense, really, uh, they are the protectors of the tabernacle. The Levites, right? Here, and and what are they really protecting? They're the ones who know the difference between. Uh, they know the sacrificial system. They know they they are meant to know the they're meant to know all of the laws of the of the 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 uh, the cult right the cultic worship of 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 our God right. So they they are the ones who are protecting the temple right in a sense protecting the purity of the temple right. The temple has to the temple since it is holy uh, has to remain uh, is supposed to remain uh, in a state of purity uh, at all times. And I was watching a great lecture series. Oh, my God. I highly recommend this guy. And I'll tell you in a second. <clears throat> but he points out, which is not his own uh, idea. But it's a common idea. But he pointed out very clearly that the Torah makes a distinction be between uh, holy and what they usually translate as profane or regular. And then between, uh, between pure or clean and impure or unclean. We'll say pure and impure. Right? So holy, he points out that holy and profane are properties of uh, uh, a property that that uh, that uh, cannot be uh, uh, that cannot be changed so for instance uh, so for instance the the tabernacle is is holy it's the province of God okay or once a uh, something is dedicated to God then it becomes Holy, yes, it can be exchanged, but it basically, unless it's exchanged, it's, it's considered holy. But purity and impurity are something else. Purity and impurity can be can be contracted, or uh, or uh, you can be purified of your impurity and become and become in a state and reach a state of purity again. So the idea is that uh, you that in order to approach something or to interact with something that's holy, you have to be in a state of purity, and that's essentially the 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 the. Uh, the uh, job of the Levites. The job of the Levites is to make sure that nothing impure comes in contact with anything that's that's holy, that's consecrated or holy, and that's why they clearly are surrounding the uh, the uh, tabernacle. And uh, and if you really look at who's guarding the entrance to the tabernacle, here you see here on the east side that would be the entrance. It's Moses and the Kohanim. They're the mm -hmm. ones who are guarding the entrance, right? And then the rest of the Levites. Are surrounded around it, or or circle, or uh, stationed around it, guarding also the the tabernacle from all four sides. So They're which, the guards. Which of, also, of, what's that? Sorry, I just was saying the back up a, a couple of thoughts where you were on uh, not introducing anything uh, profane into the atmosphere. It would be bringing the like Nadav and Avayu brought in, brought in the unholy fire. He brought in a profane fire into the holy place, which can't can't work. be done. It didn't work. <laughs> right. So that wasn't that was. I would say that's similar. So so uh, um, Nadav and Avihu they they violated the strict rules of the of of the cultic worship, mm -hmm. and in a certain sense, yeah, they 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 uh, violated the rules. Uh, but I don't know if that that's was that wasn't per se impurity. Impurity would be more like uh, I 
uh, am in a state of impurity from coming in contact with a dead body, and then I bring, then I, I, I uh, come in the area of the temple courtyard and bring a sacrifice. Now I've brought impurity into the into the house of God. I've basically come into God's house in a, in a in a, while I'm in a state of impurity, and that's a no no. That's a big no no. You can only approach God or anything that is holy, anything that's connected to God can only be approached when it's when uh, when you're in a state of purity. I think is the idea. I I should find. And also, uh, they put the uh, impure people outside of the camp. Exactly, exactly. So, so as part of the purification ritual, uh, not even part of the purification ritual, right? If you're if you're deemed uh, leprous, bad translation. But if you're deemed to have this tzara'at, scale disease or whatever they like to translate it as, then you are. That's right. You are placed outside of the camp, right? So the camp itself has a certain amount of holiness. That if you're really you know, in a bad situation, you can't even be in the camp. But the closer you get to the center, the more of a state of purity in a certain sense you have to have to be in, right? So that's why when on the one day on Yom Kippurim in in, uh, in uh, uh, Leviticus 16, when, when the Kohen Gadol uh, goes into the Holy of Holies, basically to, uh, to, uh, to atone, you know, to purify it or to atone for, for uh, its, its, uh, it's impure it's impurities it's impurification so he has to go through this incredible you know this various this bathing ritual and various sacrifices have to be brought right it's it's a whole ritual i'm gonna find if i could find this guy i okay this guy he's a uh he's a um it's a shame that he's i don't know if he's an atheist because he doesn't really talk about it, but he definitely is not a believer in the divinity of the Torah. But he's he's Jewish. He's he's a professor at the Yale Divinity School, and uh, it is such a shame that he's not a uh, Karaite or even a Rabbinite, because he is a real Torah scholar. This guy, I, I've just become super impressed with him. I don't agree with everything he says, but I'm gonna find him right here, and maybe even if I can play that one part, because he just he clarifies it so beautifully. Uh, let me just see here. His name is. Joel Baden. And if I could find that one part, maybe I'll pop it up. And here's the series. Hebrew Bible Interpretation. So if you do, if you uh, type in uh, Hebrew Bible Interpretation, Yale Divinity School, the whole series will come right up. Let me see if I can find one place where he speaks about... Um, Oops. Pentateuch at all. It is a single. No, this one. If I can find it, I'm going to take about five minutes to try to find it. And if I can, then um, it will be worth it, I think, because he really, really, really kind of uh, summarizes it. Let's see. It's not 14. Oh, God, it was all series. I would have to go to Yale Divinity School. <clears throat> then I'd have to go to playlists. Hebrew Bible interpretation. I hope this is his because there are two of them. Here is problematic. Yeah, there we go. And we were in 14, so I think it's maybe 12. Let me see. It's 12. Where he speaks about Leviticus. Love means, uh, love is something that the lower party, uh, right? The, the Let's see. It's here that Deuteronomy tells us no. what is a. Maybe 11. See here. Um, uh, is uh, aligning itself with the realities of the world outside. Second. You know, the priest material is Leviticus. pretty like. Okay. I'm going to find it. I think it's in this one right here. Almost, and that have a, a far greater uh, effect on you as, a, as an individual. And the, la see. the last and perhaps most significant um, expansion. Least, no, uh, maybe it's the one before. You know, in terms of, I can't find it in a minute or two. I'll just give up. But if you listen to this lecture series, it's he's really good. The climax of the divine theophany, according to P, right, comes in three stages. First, the appearance on the top of Sinai, right. Uh, uh, one second. And then once the tabernacle is built, the entrance into the tabernacle, and now finally, third. The beginning of proper sacrificial worship. One this second. moment, Leviticus nine, is the climax. Right, God has 
had his house built and is dwelling in his house and now has uh, inaugurated the priestly cult. No, that it's got to be the next one. All right, one more second. Let me see if I can find it. There's another category too. Another category of, of behaviors that defile the land in a different sense of defile almost. And then have a second. far greater uh, effect on you as, a, as an individual. Child sacrifice, uh, we should remember. No, I'm not going to find it. It's like looking for history, but the a needle in a haystack. And having slaves. Anyway, okay, I'm going to give up because otherwise I'll just be here for the next half an hour. But that's that's his, that's his uh, the guy. If you watch his lecture series, uh, it's a, you know it's a little bit uh, annoying at times because he's he uh, believes in the documentary hypothesis. And uh, he, um, you know, he's obviously very liberal, or else he wouldn't be a professor at Yale University. But the guy is really a—he's really a great Torah scholar. He starts off like every lecture series; it starts off a little bit slow, but once you get into him and see what he's trying to say, he's—he's he's brilliant. He really is a, a brilliant uh, Torah scholar. So, anyway, if I find it, maybe we'll I'll get uh, you to send the uh, the link to that if you would. Yeah, like. sure. Thanks. Do it. I'll send the link to the entire. Can do to the entire series here. Hold on a second. So playlists. Anything like that is problematic. Our English Bibles. Every okay, so here it is. You know this one. Okay. So it's the guy. Right. Adherence. Okay, so here's a like here's the link to the the first lecture, and then you could pick up all the rest from there. So let's see here. Right. Share. Copy. And let me pop it into the chat here. Okay, there we go. I put it in the chat. So <clears throat> at any rate, so all right, let's go back to where we were. Um So, verse 49, Ach et mate lewi. Let's highlight that. Ach et mate lewi lo tifkod wa'ed rosham lo tisa bitoch mene Israel. So they're going to be counted separately. Ve ata afkhed et halewiim al mishkan ha'aydut. One second, please. Uh, call me. Just quit this app. Okay. Al mishkan ha'aydut wa'al kol kelao wa'al kol Okay, verse 51. Uh, highlight here a couple of verses. Ubin soa hamishkan, Yoridu oto haliwiim. U be hanot hamishkan, Yakimoto haliwiim. So there it says, any stranger, anyone who's not a Levite, who basically is carrying, you know, setting up or taking apart or transporting the <coughs> the Mishkan, uh, will die. Uh, we actually see this in the Tanakh with uh, um, uh, Uziah. Let's find this. Not Uziah. Wait a second. Let's see. Oh, what? So um, let me just find it here for one second. Uziah is the ark. There we go. Uzah, not Uziah. So this is in... Second Samuel six, one. So Second Samuel six. Let's go to that for a second, and we can just read it very quickly. <clears throat> so Second Samuel six. I'll just read it in the English just to make things go a little bit quicker. 
Okay, but David again brought together all the able men of skip here a little bit and Judah to bring up there. So he he and all his men, so David and all his men went to Baala in Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim on the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Aminadav, Abi Avin Nadav, uh Avinadav. Who, which was on the hill, Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the Ark of God in it. And Ahio was walking in front of it. David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, systems, and cymbals. When, <clears throat> when they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the Ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down, and he died there beside, besides the Ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and to this day, the place is called Peretz Uzzah. Okay? So here we have a guy. He sees the, the Ark of the Covenant. David is, is trying to bring up the Ark to, uh, um, uh, to uh, Jerusalem, and uh, so uh, this guy Uzzah is on the cart. The Ark is about to fall off the cart, and, and Uzzah reaches out. Uzzah, who is not a Levite, reaches out try to save the ark from falling on the floor and God kills him. That's that's how serious it is that this verse here uh, is uh, is considered, right? Here we have anyone who is not a uh, Levite, right? Who comes close to the tabernacle. I mean, hold on, I'm just going to shut this door. The, anyone who comes close to the tabernacle who's not, who's not a Levite, and makes contact with the the furniture of the tabernacle, either in transporting it, taking it apart, putting it together, is uh, is put to death. It dies, not put to death, but it dies. Right. So we see that actually in the case of Uzzah. Okay, verse fifty-two: Hanu bnei Yisrael ish al mahanehu wa ish al diglo litzivotam. So here we have um, ah, so here we have actually uh, a, uh, a mention that the uh, the children of Israel. Uh, camped uh, each in his camp and each according to his uh, diglo in modern Hebrew is a banner or a flag so here they also translate it standard litzivotam according to their their uh, their hosts or according to their armies okay and the Levites uh, uh, will camp around the tabernacle Mishkan uh, Idut, the tabernacle of the of the of the uh, Idut the, uh, is the, uh, the the tablets of the covenant. So it says here explicitly, right, that uh, that there why here we have in verse fifty three why are the Levites camping right around the Mishkan? Okay, it says that that God that basically God's anger should not strike out on the on the uh, on the uh, congregation of the children of Israel, because the because the uh, the Levites will be guarding, uh, they will keep the the, uh, the the they will they will be basically they will be guarding the uh, the uh, the uh, tabernacle, the Mishkan uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the of the Ark of the Covenant. Basically, they're they're guarding guarding God's house, right? And then typical summary sentence that the children of Israel did all that, right? So we see here explicitly the Torah is saying that that the reason the Levites are, are camped right around the uh their the reason they're camped right around the uh the uh the tabernacle is because it's their God their their job to guard that tabernacle. Okay, and what are they guarding it from? They're guarding it from any impurity and they're guarding it from any any violation of uh of the uh of the rules of the of cultic worship basically the the priests they're the ones who who are in charge and meant to be the experts in uh in in the cultic worship in the in the worship of yahweh the system of worship i don't like to use the word cultic worship because you know the word cult even though that's not what it originally meant but uh, you know this this the system of worship of of yahweh they are the they are to be the experts and the guards of that that system is carried out and not violated that is basically that's basically their job right they're like the religious authorities of uh of of the people of israel okay so i think that you know you have in in deuteronomy 
Uh, <clears throat> let's just find the actual verse, the famous verse in, in uh, oops, uh, Deuteronomy uh, 17. Right, so here it is. I'll just read the English, just again to save a little bit of time. Go to the Levitical priests and to the judge who is in, in office at the time. Inquire of them, and they will give you the verdict, okay? So if, we'll start in eight. If cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuits, or assaults, take them to the place the Lord your God will choose. Go to the Levitical priests and to the judge who is in office at the time. Inquire of them, and they will give you the verdict. So you must according to the act according to the decisions they give you. So it says if you're having having these these various uh, disputes, right, that you go to the judge or the Levite, right? So is there a breakdown in 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 uh, roles there? I mean, are the Levites supposed to be judging just you know tort cases, let's say, you know, or cases of uh, you know he took my he took my ox and and you know and uh, and uh, never returned it. I, it's not really clear because that's not really their area of expertise, right? The, the, their area of expertise, that's really supposed to be the, the judge is dealing with that, okay? Even though it does say here, bloodshed, lawsuits, or assaults, okay? If we look at the, the words in, in Hebrew, uh, these are not, these are, these are again like, you know, uh, uh, these are not issues having to deal or that are dealing with, um, uh, purity and impurity, or dealing with with uh, with uh, issues of uh, you know the system of worship of of uh, Yahweh, these seem to be general issues. So it's entirely possible, I guess, that you went to the Levites also. Maybe they were meant to be experts in general in the Torah. So if you have you know uh, you know Ruvain took my uh, cow and 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 uh, milked it and uh, never returned it, then maybe you also do go to a Levite. But uh, but it seems uh, that that uh, really the the expertise of the of the uh, Levites and the Kohanim is uh is to be is to understand to be experts in the in the system of worship in the cultic worship of, of Yahweh and to implement it and to guard it to make sure it's not violated so at any rate uh so that's what we have here hold on one second I'm just gonna close the door here Okay, so all right, any comments, any questions? Okay, if not, then I'm gonna go on. Melik, we're gonna we're gonna listen to you in the background. We're having our lunch. Okay, sure. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go on here. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so that's the end of chapter one. That's the end of uh, Numbers chapter one. Now we go on to Numbers chapter two, and here we have the order, of, order of the camps. I'll try to go through this quickly because we already saw it. Picture is worth a thousand words. We already saw the order of the camp, right? But if there's anything else above and beyond what we uh, what we saw in the picture, then I'll I'll try to point it out. So Numbers two verse one. So ish al diglo beotot levet avotam. That's kind of a strange statement. Each each person or each tribe is really meant because the the tribes are named after individual, right? So each each person. Um. Maybe it's not each tribe. Maybe it means each person is uh, is part of his al dirlo, according to his his again a degel is a flag or a standard, right? A standard or a banner, as it's translated here. Close this out. Be uh, otot, according to the signs. Levet avotam yahanu bnei Israel minegad saviv laoel ma'ed yahanu. Tribe had a flag. Do we know what those flags look like? I don't. I can't think of any place in the Torah that it says anything about the the flags of the of the tribes of Israel. Flags of the tribes of Israel. Uh, 
Uh, okay. <laughs> Not sure where they get this from. Ishar looks like a like the Turkish flag. Asher looks like the flag of Lebanon. <laughs> uh, Binyamin is a wolf. I guess that makes sense. Judah is a Jewish star. That's definitely not uh, is a, a star of David. That's definitely not biblical. So, so we don't know what, if anything, those flags look like. I'm curious to see if any of the commentaries have anything to say about that. <clears throat> uh, let's look at, uh, and maybe I'll add this this guy uh, Baden. Uh, who I mentioned has also done a, um, a commentary on the Torah. I don't know if he has written commentary in a book form, but I know in, on Twitter he goes through all of the uh, every verse, verse by verse, and makes some comments. So let's let's do that. Let's see what he has to say. Let me see if I can find him. Oh, pod in Twitter. So. <clears throat> We can add this to our list of commentaries because we're always looking for some good commentaries. So, uh, okay. No, thank you. Log in. No, thank you. Let me actually have to log in. Um, I don't remember. Okay, let's see if I can do it without logging in. So, okay. Show this thread. And here we have one, Genesis 12, blah, 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 Exodus, Leviticus, 23 to 27. Let's think about turtles. I don't know where that comes. Tip up the turtle. This makes it a lot easier to revisit and reread the threads. Thank you. I'm so fast. Bye. Okay. Uh, what happened to him? Why don't we... One second. All right. Let's click on his name. Joel Baden. Any thoughts? Okay. Exodus. 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 And then, what the heck is going on here? What happened to him? I'm very confused. Leviticus, and then I'm not getting his thingy. Twitter is very confusing at times. Oh, damn it. All right, maybe I'll log in. Okay, I'm going to log in here. No. Log in. I could do this. Oh, I don't even have the. Okay, I do. All right. So. No, that's not it. Damn it. Password. Okay. Never. One second here. Let me see if I can do this. Because <clears throat> if I get logged in here, then this will be good for a, for many weeks. So Twitter. Just give me one second. One second. One in Carol Insights Settings. My account. Account information. Okay. All right. That's the right login information. Log in. Google. that okay I think I'm logged in now so now let's try Joel Baden
Then, Yale professor Joel Bodden now admits the documentary hypothesis is not related to mosaic authorship or earliest alphabet. I don't even know what that means, but okay. Interesting. Um, so let's check this out. Now, we go here. Now we try to go to his thingy, and I hope I don't run into that stupid turtle thing, whatever. I don't get it. Why is it doing this? Show more replies. Now it goes to, I, I, I don't get this thing at all. I click on this, tweets. Okay, show this thread. Maybe it's not up to numbers yet. Maybe that's the thing. Genesis, Exodus, 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 Leviticus, Leviticus, Leviticus. I guess that's the end of the thread. I guess that's the end of the thread. But I could have sworn. Dad, all right. I don't know. I never understood how Twitter is too complicated for me. Honestly. Joel Bodden. Wait, maybe I go here. Okay. Just really we're done. Blah, blah, blah. Show this thread. I don't know. I'll, have to figure I'll leave it up. I'll leave it open here and then I'll just figure it out. Okay. That's that. So, um, let me give it one more little attempt. <clears throat> numbers so why is he not I'm totally confused okay all right numbers 16 Number 16, number 16. Sixteen. I don't even know how to search it. Numbers 15. I'm going down. Numbers 14. Numbers 12. Numbers 11. Numbers 8. Numbers 10. I don't get this. Numbers 9. I'm just about to organize. Numbers 8. Number 5. And we want to go to numbers 2. I really hate Twitter. It's so damn confusing. Supposed to be simple because everything's supposed to be short tweets, but it's, it's I, I never understand how to navigate around Twitter. Never have numbers three, numbers one, numbers two. Okay, so here we are. Numbers two. I better open this in another. Add tweet report. This goes to something else. If I click on this, how do I do it? Oh, it's too I don't know. I think I give up. Um. Here we get the details. So this is what he says. Here we get the details of the Israelite, how the Israelites will camp by tribe around the tenth meeting. That's all the new information here. Otherwise, the numbers and names are all what we just had in the previous chapter. Someone commented here, what's the deal with the compass directions? Some make good geographical sense, e.g., Naftali Asher and post migration Dan in the north. So post migration Dan, this is all uh 
uh, okay, so that's speaking about when when uh, when the tribe of Dan uh, searches. This is mentioned in the book of Judges uh, when they find a, uh, a town named Laish in the north. At any rate, but others really don't. Lumping Judah's willingness and there's no risk. I don't know. I've got to figure out how to navigate all this stuff. Uh, my battery is running low, so what I want to do at this point is take a quick break. I'll put on some music, and I'm just going to go plug in my battery. So let me do that. Put on a little music. Or, you know what? I'll put on... Uh, no, I'll put on music. New channel. History. Alrighty. Oh, let's put this on. And I will be back in a couple of minutes. Oh. 
Okay, we're back. Welcome back to the World Alliance of Karaim uh, Torah study. And this is Melech Ben Yaakov. And why is it not doing that? I'm confused. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, I've got to share screen. Share window. Later. Boom. Okay. Now I should be doing it. Alrighty. So, do it that way. Maybe that's a little bit better. I do it that way. But now the text is too Hellenic. All right, I guess I'm going to have to do it that way. Okay. Okay, so, um, so where were we? So we have the order of the camps. Oh, we wanted to get some commentary on this. The Globe Otot, what are these? banners that they're talking about we have no images of the banners anywhere no descriptions of any of the banners right okay well we tried to get joel Baden up because i would like to start using his commentary the guy's really really good i wish he would he didn't believe in the documentary hypothesis and all this kind of nonsense um but uh but he does so um what can you do uh at any rate, he's really is a, a brilliant Torah scholar, I must say. A real, real Jew. <laughs> real, real Jewish acting and sounding. And, and you can tell he re- truly loves the Tanakh, uh, but does not believe in the divinity of the Tanakh. It's pretty clear, I think. I can't speak for him. Okay, at any rate, so um, where were we? So let's look then at, let's go fall back on our uh, steady, on our uh, 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 reliable. Uh, Robert Alter. And we have to go to numbers, 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 numbers. Let me make this a little bit. So where are we? We're in numbers. Two. So numbers chapter two. <clears throat> okay, so let's get some commentary on this. Uh, after the success list, uh, Robert Alter's commentary on that uh, line. On, uh, why is it so damn slow? Uh, after the preceding census lists, which was of the tribal chieftains and then the head count of each of the tribes with a stress on the census, as a means of implementing military conscription, we have given a plan for the marching order of the Israelite forces, each tribe a military unit carrying its distinctive insignia. Uh, the marching formation is a protective square meant to ward off potential assaults from all directions with the tent of meeting, uh, the sacred locus of encounter between God and Moses, and the site of the cult inside the square. Okay, so he doesn't add anything really to the issue of these banners. <clears throat> uh, let's look at Ibn Ezra. So numbers 2-2. Two, two. Tanakh, we've had a lot of luck with the Ibn Ezra. Really, really good commentator. Great respect for the man from uh, what we've seen so far. Oh, that's interesting how you do it. Yeah, that context versions. What the heck is that? Oh, let's see. Okay. Um, so what is going on here? No. That's not what I want. We have to go down here. And we go to Ibn Ezra. Numbers, chapter 2, oh, is, it, is it verse 2? Yes, the global otot. So what does the Ibn Ezra have to say? The uh, otot, simanim hayu v'chol degel v'degel. We had monenu amru shehaya v'degel ru ven tzurat adam make, make, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Surat Adam. Um, uh, mekach. I think that I'm not even sure what this word is. Not the Hebrew word. Mekach. Mikoach. Mikoach. Darash. Dudaim. I don't know. Uh, 
Darash to Daim or Bedegel Yehuda Tzurat. So at any rate, there was. So this is okay. So when it says Mekad Monenu, this just means that these are traditions that were passed down. So basically, what the Ibn Ezra is saying is that there were signs on each, on every single one of these flags. Okay. And I guess that's what he means. He's so he's trying to explain what does it mean. Uh, <clears throat> the word otot, right? Because again, in Numbers <coughs> two, it says ish adiglob otot lebeit avotam. So each each person, according to his flag, to his banner, otot lebeit avotam, with the signs of the houses of their fathers, the insignia or the the uh, the insignia of the, the of their fathers' houses. Okay, so. Um, uh, fathers' houses is usually less of a breakdown than than the tribes, so maybe it's possible. So maybe each father's house had its own insignia. At any rate, so the Ibn Ezra says that in the case of Ruvain, um. Uh, that there was a person on it, okay? Surat Adam, Mikach Darash Dudaim, because he requested Dudaim. I'm not sure what the co- the two Daim are the mandrakes. I'm not sure what the common the, what the connection between a person and a mandrakes are. At any rate, Ubedega uh, Yehuda Surat Arye, and on the on the uh, on the uh, flag of Yehuda was the, the the form of a of a lion. Um, Kibo. Because he was because Yaakov Jacob was compared to a lion. So basically, they're making it up. They don't know. They because the key here is uh this word here. What the Ibn Israel is saying is the Kadmonenu, our ancestors, or how how do they translate it here? <clears throat> the ancients, okay, whatever the heck that means, right? That basically means here. In fact, the the, uh, the uh, footnote here says the Talmudic sage. So basically, uh, the Ibn Ezra is basically admitting that we really have no idea what these banners were and what signs were on the banners. It, it just seems to be banners according to the fathers' houses. And again, the word father um, necessarily mean uh, the uh, the tribes. Fathers' houses could be more like clans within the tribes, uh, but uh, okay. But there were some flags with some signs on it. And we have no idea what those signs were. That's the bottom line. Okay, that's the honest answer. We don't know. Okay, the Talmudic sages for sure didn't know. If they did, then uh, you know, it was a little wisp of a memory of a wisp of a memory, whatever was passed down. Okay, so uh, so they they encamped around basically around the uh, the Ohel Moed, the tent of meeting. <clears throat> so Honim Kedma Mizraha. So Kedma and Mizraha um both mean east. Well, literally what it means is towards the rising sun. Okay. But Kedma <laughs> um uh but Kedma and, and Mizraha usually are used kind of interchangeably for east. But together, Kedma Kadima means in the direction of or towards, and Mizraha means the rising sun. The NIV, I think, does not have a very good translation of that. Let's just look. <clears throat> Yeah, on the east towards the sunrise. So Kedma, I don't think it means east, but it really means towards, okay, or towards uh, in the direction of, shall we say. Okay. Okay, then. All right. At any rate, uh, there's a lot to say about that. Um, so if you're uh, facing east towards the rising sun, then the rising sun is in front of you, or it's it's Kedem, it's before you, right? 
So uh, basically, the underlying root of the word Kedem is Kadam, which means before. Okay, so I would translate this as Vahonim Kad Kedma Mizracha. I would translate this as they, they camp towards the rising sun in the direction or facing the rising sun would be, maybe be a better translation. Okay, Degen Machane Yehuda Litziv Otam. So I guess now, Isha Diglo Beotot Levet Avotam. So I guess the context here is that each tribe had its own degel, had its own flag, okay? So in this case, maybe the word Beit Avotam does not mean clans, but actually does mean tribes. Beit Avotam is one of those words that can mean slightly different things depending on the context. <clears throat> and then we have Venasil Vene Yehuda Nachshon Ben Ami Nadav in the previous chapter. We were given these names okay so we have here in numbers chapter one where is Yehuda Nachshon ben Aminadav so it's just going to be a repeat of the names here okay uh, and again we're going through the same numbers we had before right so that's 47,600. We just saw 47,600 in the previous chapter, right? When the numbers were given. So we go to Yehuda, okay? I'm sorry, 74,000, not 47,000. With Sheshmaot, 74,600. Um, and here we have again. Exactly the same number, exactly the same name, and exactly the same number. So we're getting a repeat of Numbers chapter 1, where we had these names and these numbers, but now it's being put in the context of, of uh, the positions around the camp. Okay, uh, So now we have something also interesting, right? So Yehuda is mentioned as being camping to the east. And camping along with him, camping on him or upon him or with him, really along with him. So Yehuda is clearly picked out as the dominant one of the east side, right? Which is what we said earlier. Earlier. So again, the same thing. Repetition of the name, repetition of the number. Verse 7. I should be highlighting these verses and I should be making sure that, yes. Okay. Verse 7. Matez Vulun, Venasiz Vulun, Nasiv Livnev Vulun, Eliav Ben Halon. So I'm going to skip a little bit because we see the pattern here, okay? We're getting repeats of the numbers and we're getting repeats of the names, okay? But the uh, one piece of interesting information we have here is Rishona Isu. So they, they traveled first, okay? So when the camp traveled, it was the uh, it was the east side that traveled first. Okay, I guess even if they were moving north or south or even west, the east uh, side traveled first. Okay, so kol pikudim lemachane Yehuda maat elef shmonim elef sheshet alafim. So now this is called machane Yehuda. Okay, and uh, it doesn't mention it in the uh, in the uh, Torah, but. Uh, um, they sold a lot of tomatoes and cucumbers there, and there was a lot of haggling over prices. And okay, I'm even yavin. I'm not going to explain that one. If you get the reference, you get it. If you don't, go visit Israel, Jerusalem, to be exact. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so that's called Machane Yehuda, right? So that is Machane Yehuda. They're the dominant ones on the east side. Okay, so Degen Machane Ruven Temana. So the the flag or the member of the camp of Ruvain. So the one on the on the on the uh, south is called Mahane Ruvain. So they're the dominant one, right? So we always see the dominant one is. Remember, we mentioned God. I, I should really should count this up. I mean, I should really should write this up and respond to uh, uh, one of these Joel Bottom tweets. But we see the dominant one. We see that in any side that uh, um, that we're going. Uh, uh, clockwise to uh, that we're always going clockwise. Okay, the dominant one 
is uh, is always in the first position if you're going clockwise. So on the on the east side, Judah is the main one. Then Yisachar and Zvulun. On the south side, Ruvain is the main one. Then Shimon and Gad. Ephraim is the dominant one. Here, Dan is the dominant one. And then Asher and Naphtali. Okay. Dan, we said, is... Uh, oops, I closed that. Why did I close that? Let's open it again. Let's see if I can find history. There, that's the one we're looking at. Okay. So Don... Uh, oops. One second. Why is it doing this? One second here. Let's do this. So uh, Don is the dominant one. So Don is the son of Bilha, and then Asher and Naphtali. Asher and Naphtali are the, the second born each of the two of the two concubines. Okay. <clears throat> and then yeah, so that's all four sides. So we have the camp of Judah, Mahani Huda, Mahani Ruvain, Mahane Ephraim, and Mahane Dan, always going in uh, clockwise order, right? Uh in other words, on each side it's always going in, in clockwise order, right? The importance. Ephraim and Asha bin Yamin. Dan, Asha Naftali, Judah, Ishad Zvulun, Ruvain, Shimon Gad. Okay. So we have if we go if we pick any side and we go counterclockwise, starting from the uh, on that side, okay. Then we're going from basically the most dominant to the least dominant or the most important to the to the uh, least important, right? That's one of the patterns we saw. Okay, Shmona Elif Sheshit Elafim Varba. Okay, Degan Machane Ruvain. So here we're talking about the camp. So the southern side is called the camp of Ruvain. And again, we get the uh the uh, people or the head of the camp of Ruvain. And the numbers and camping along with him, Mate Shimon. Then we have Shimon and his numbers. There's Shlomiel, Shlumiel, Shlumiel, Tzuri Shaddai, Utsiba Opegba. I'm just going to skim here. Then we have God. And again, we have the number, the head of God and the and the number. And so again, this is called Machane Ruvain. And they traveled second. Okay, so the Machane Ruvain traveled second. So the order of the traveling is the east and then the south. <coughs> and then the Ohel Moed traveled. Excuse me for one second. Okay, then they all Moed traveled. Mahne uh, Halivim, Halivim, Toha Mahanot, Kasher Yahnu Ken Y Sau, Ish Liado Le Degle Hem. Okay, so then the Levites and the Ohel Moed traveled. Then we have Dagil Mahane Ephraim. Again, we see the pattern here that Ephraim is the dominant one. Okay, again, we're going count, we're going clockwise. Ephraim, Menashe, Benjamin. So uh, they're on the west. So we have the east traveling, then the south, then the west, and then the north. So we're starting here. Oops. So the order of travel is east, west, then the camp, then the uh, tabernacle, then the south, and then the north. Right. And of course, they're they're not. In other words, they're not. Um, staying in this formation as they travel, okay? I guess the implication is they're traveling in a line, right? So you could think of it as, as like a, a long line. The first in the line is the east side, the Machane Yehuda, 
The second in the line is Machane Ruvain. The third in the line is the Levites in the tabernacle. The fourth in the line is Machane Ephraim. And the fifth in the line in the back, quite frankly, the least important of them, the three sons of three, the three sons of concubines, is the uh Machane Dan. Okay, so right. So Degad Machane Ephraim. Uh, so Judah was really Mahane. Yehuda was at the front, right? And Yehuda is kind of uh, so he's leading the pack, basically. Yehuda, right? Yehuda is is the uh, ancestor of David, right? Yehuda is the one who's kind of given the uh, the authority, at least according to the to the uh, blessing that. Uh, Yaakov gave Judah at the end of of Book of Genesis, so Judah is kind of you know he's leading the attack. Just as David went out much later on, his descendant David went out you know before the entire army of Israel. Uh, so Judah here, his ancestors going out before the entire army of Israel. Okay. Degel Mahane Ephraim le Tzivotam. So now we get to the camp of Ephraim. Again, I'm going to skim here. We have the numbers. And we have the same people that were listed in Numbers 1. Let's see if there's anything else to mention. Gamliel, right? So Gamliel is already a biblical name, right? Gamliel is probably most famously known for, uh, for Rabbi Gamliel, Rabban Gamliel, who wrote that, who was the one, I'm sorry, Not doing it. So let's learn about this Rabbi Gamliel. Throw that spike because too long ago. Okay. So he was the Nasi, okay, of the great Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. Although some dispute this, it says. So he definitely senior position in the highest reputation in the Mishnah for being one of the greatest teachers in all the annals of Judaism, etc. Okay, so that's the later Gamliel. That's probably more famous than this Gamliel. Okay, so. Uh, Verse 21, skipping. So we're in this section right here. <coughs> Again, we just have names and numbers that are mentioned in chapter 1, so I'm not going to read them. I'm just looking if there's anything I want to point out. Just again, that they traveled third. Okay? Shloshim, Shlishim, Isa'u. So they were the group to travel. The Ark is not counted as the third group, okay? Or the Levites are not the third group, right? They're considered separate. The Ark is considered separate, but they're the third tribal group, the third camp to go travel, okay? Then we have Mahanidan on the north. Again, names and numbers. And... The Achrona is is le deglehem. Okay. In the rear. So they were basically the rear guard. Lachrona is le deglehem. It doesn't say fourth, it says last or in the rear. Okay. And it adds the words le deglehem, which I'm not sure what the significance of that is. Maybe nothing. But in the other ones, it says traveled third, traveled second. Here it says traveled last, according to their flags, according to their banners. Okay, let's go now here. Ele pikude bene Israel levet avotam kol pikude hamahane litzivotam shesh meot elef shloshim alafim v'chamish meot v'chamishim. Okay, so now we have a total count. 
600,000, uh, 603,550. And if you add it all up, let's do it. Actually, I'll do it on my, no, we'll do it here. So equals. Equals sixty two thousand seven hundred plus forty one thousand five hundred plus fifty three thousand four hundred. Really, you know what? I should start with the camp of Judah just to keep it in the same order. So let's do this again. Equals seventy four thousand six hundred. Plus four hundred plus fifty seven thousand four hundred. Now we go to the camp of Ruvain forty six hundred. Fifty-nine thousand three hundred for Shimon. Plus for God, forty-five thousand six fifty. <clears throat> now we go to the camp of Ephraim, forty thousand five hundred. Then we go to the camp of Menasha, thirty-two thousand two hundred. Thirty-five thousand four hundred. What that? Thirty-five thousand five four hundred. Now we get to the camp of Don, sixty-two thousand seven hundred. Forty-one thousand five hundred. And finally, not probably fifty three thousand four hundred. Fifty three four hundred. Grand total is why is it not the internet? Six hundred three thousand five hundred and fifty. Okay. Okay. So that comes out to six hundred three thousand five hundred fifty. That's exactly the number. Uh, that's mentioned here, right? Once again, Shishmot Elif Shloshet Alafim, 603,550. Okay, 603,550. Okay, so the count works out. Alevi im lohit pakdu The Levites were not counted among the children of Israel, they were counted separately. Kashet Siwa, Yahweh, and Et Moshe as God commanded as Yahweh commanded Moshe. Ya Asuban Israel, Kahol Ashet Siwa, Yahweh, Moshe, Ken, Hanul, Dirlehem, Bahem, Nasu Ish, Lemish Bachotab, Al Beit Avotav. Okay, so they did it exactly as God commanded. Uh, and that's how they camped, and that's how they traveled. And that's the end of Numbers 2. Let's go on to Numbers 3. <clears throat> and now we have the breakdown of the role of the Levite clan. What we have here is, I'll start reading in Hebrew. 
ואלה תודות אהרון שביום דיבר יחווה את בהר סיני. ואלה שמות בני אהרון הבכור, נדב ואביהו, אלעזר ואיתמר. אלה שמות בני אהרון הכהנים המשוחים, אשר מילא ידם לכהן. לכהן. Verse 4, Yamat Nadav Avihu, right? So here it speaks about the death of Nadav and Avihu, which we saw back in Leviticus 7, something like that. Let's see. No, I think it was like Leviticus 10, actually, or 11. Let's try Leviticus 10. No, Leviticus 11 is Kashrut. Yeah, Leviticus 10, okay? So we saw that back in Leviticus 10 when Nadav and Avihu, they decided to violate the laws of the system of worship of, Yah of Yahweh and they brought their own uh, incense and they were killed. The fire came down and, and burnt them. Okay. Instead of burning the incense, it came down and burnt them. Okay. Okay. And they had no children, so they died out with it. And instead of them, so instead of uh, um, Nadav and Avihu, uh, then Itamar and Elazar and Itamar took over along with or uh, in front of their father or along with their father. Before the face, literally, uh, of their father, Aaron. Okay, verse five. Verse five. Why the bear Yahweh el Moshe le mor akrev et mate lewi vehamadeta oto. <clears throat> so now the tribe of Levi, the entire tribe of Levi, uh, is basically being given as a gift to uh, Aaron to help him out, serve him. In other words, to help out with the, the uh, service, the, uh, the temple service, not the temple service, the uh, tabernacle service. Wishamru et mishmarto wa et mishmerit. Okay, so so they will keep his his uh uh his uh, uh how would you translate this uh his his uh uh, guard, they will keep it there. They will. I don't, I, don't, it's, I don't have a good translation in my head. <laughs> Let's see what the English translation. It doesn't matter. They'll, they'll basically do. They'll basically do what they what uh, they're required to do uh, for Aharon the Kohen and for all of the congregation. Okay, uh, with regards to the Ohel Moed, regard to the tent of meeting. Verse eight. Shamru et kol kle Ohel Moed. And they will guard all of the vessels of the tent of meeting. And uh, and they will do the guarding, the guarding of the of the lavod et avodat mishkan. So they will do basically the bidding. Maybe that would be a good translation of the word mishmeret. It it comes from the word shamar lishmor, which means to keep or to guard. So they will keep guard, maybe that would be a good translation, but Mishmeret Ben Israel, they will keep guard for the children of Israel. I like that. Let's go with that. They will keep guard for the children of Israel, Lavodet Avodat Hamishkan, to perform the service or to do the work of the uh, of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle. Um What do we say? We shamru et kol kle ohel moed wa et mishmeret and they will keep guard for, right? That's what we said. 
Okay. Mishamru at Mishmarto. They will keep guard for him and they will keep guard for all. Okay, I like the translation. So now God speaking to Moshe. And you will give the Levites to Aaron, Ulevanav, and to his offspring, right? Basically to the priests. Nitunim, uh, Nitunim, Hema. They are Nitunim, Nitunim. That's a repetition. Whenever we have repetition in biblical Hebrew, that that uh, signifies emphasis. So they are. No, I have no idea where Lavi is. Why? You don't know where he is? Oh, there he is. Okay. So, uh, Uh, Natata et Halewiim. Right. So the, the the God gives the commandment to Moses and saying, bring close, bring forth the tribe of Levi, or bring close the tribe of Levi, and uh, uh, and to basically give them to to Aaron, stand them before the Aaron coin. Well, just leave it open because otherwise he. He wanted to go in. Okay. Shamru et kol clay oil moed va et mishmenet ben Israel avod et avodat mishkan menatata et alivuim la Aaron ulevanav nitunim nitunim hema. So they are most definitely, or they were, they are verily given is usually the way they like to translate it, or thoroughly given, right? Hema lo ma'et ben Israel. But it's emphasis, right? They're like they. That's it. There's no no two ways about it. They are completely given over to uh, the Kohanim, Ma'et um, Bnei Israel, from the children of Israel. So the gift of God to the Kohanim is the rest of the tribe of Levi. Okay, that you could put it that way. Aaron Vanav, Tifkod, Wa Shavru Et Kuunatam Uhazar Hakarev Humat. So. Now this is another commandment to uh, uh, from God to Moses. So you'll choose out, or you'll. But God is kind of a strange word to, to translate. You will point out. You will single out. Let's see how the how various translations deal with it. I'm assuming they're going to say single out or give over or something like that. Uh. Point. Okay, you'll single out Aaron and his sons. Let's look at some other of the translations. <clears throat> so this is Numbers three ten. Let's <laughs> close out. Numbers three ten. Point, a point, a point, a point, a point, a point. Okay, so everyone's going with a point. I like the I like single out better than a point, but it's a similar idea. All of the various translations are going with a point. Shall make a register, the NRSV, which I think is a if I'm not mistaken, is a revision of the King James Version. Uh we shall make a register of our own. Okay, shall point our own a point. Okay, we get the idea. All right, so um, let me just see something here. Cross references. Oh, this is cool. This is a cool little feature that I didn't notice before. These cross references. Okay, cool.
Alrighty, so um, we'll go with the point. Right, Aaron Vanav Tifkod. Okay, I I I'm gonna go with single out. Okay, she'll single out. Shamru et et kunatam, and uh, they shall uh, <clears throat> they shall uh, be careful or guard their their priesthood. Okay. So this is a commandment from God to Moshe. This is in the singular. What Aaron et Vanav Tifkod. So you, Moses, shall single out or shall appoint Aaron and his sons. Vishamru. And now this is a command to Aaron and his sons. Okay. You shall appoint Aaron and his sons, and they, Vishamru et Kunatam, and they shall guard or they shall be careful to careful with their priesthood, with the roles of their priesthood. Vazara Karev Ha Karev Yumat. And any stranger. Okay, and the word stranger in this context means anyone who's not a priest. Okay, zar uh, hakarev yumat, and any stranger, uh, any non-priest, but literally stranger, uh, who comes who uh, comes close. In other words, who starts performing the uh, the priest the uh, priestly services of the system of worship, the cult, the cultic worship of Yahweh, uh, shall die. Verse eleven: We daber Yahweh el Moshe lemor. Okay, there we go. We deber Yahweh el Moshe lemor ani hine lakakti et haliwiim mitoch bnei Israel tahad kol vechor beter rechem mibnei Israel vhayu li haliwiim kili kol vechor biyom hakuti kol vechor beeretz Mitzrayim iktashi li kol vechor bi Israel me Adam and behema li ihiu ani Yahweh. So this is an interesting verse. This is an interesting verse. I should get rid of this. <coughs> we hear. So God is saying, uh, I've taken the living im among the children of Israel instead of all of the firstborn. Every firstborn that opens the womb. Okay? So basically, what God is basically saying is really, uh, I should have taken the firstborn belonged to me. Verse 13. From the day. So again, we've spoken about this idea of the firstborn uh, many times before, right? Um, uh, Yisrael Bini uh, Bichori uh, who right? God, uh, Israel is God says Israel is my son, my firstborn son, right? And if you do not, this is what uh, the most the message that that uh, Yahweh tells Moses to give to Pharaoh. If you do not let my firstborn son go, then I will kill all of your firstborn, right? So this is constant. I mean, we've already spoken it all the way back in Genesis. This whole theme of the firstborn, right? So here we have this theme uh, coming up again. And in this case, uh, we see that uh, the Torah mentions from the day that I struck down the firstborn in the in the land of Egypt, I took the firstborn of Israel uh, for myself. Okay, made holy, sanctified. I've sanctified for me all of the firstborn in Israel from from uh, from human. Uh, or including both human, from human to animal, li yu ani ani Yahweh, right? So the firstborn belongs to to uh, God. When he struck down to Yahweh, when he struck down the firstborn in Egypt, uh, by doing that act, he basically acquired the firstborn in Israel for himself, right? That was the pay the payment um, for, uh, that was the payment that uh, he exacted. No, we won't put it that way. That was the, uh, the, uh, the natural recompense that uh, he got by striking down the firstborn in uh, in Egypt, right? He won for himself. He he acquired for himself. He purchased for himself the firstborn among uh, Israel. Okay, so Botar. <clears throat> so where do we see that? We see that in Exodus. Chapter. 
Okay, we have the ceremony of the consecration of the firstborn. I will read it in English just to make it go a little bit faster. Okay, the Lord says to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn male. He's, you know what? Consecrate. Again, that's that word, kadeshli. Uh, okay, let's maybe we should look at it in Hebrew. Okay. Kadeshli kol v'chor peter kol rechem b'vnei Yisrael. Okay. I'll go back to the English, or maybe I'll keep it open both in English and Hebrew. <clears throat> so this is, um, right, this is, Exodus 12 is the, um, the laws of the first Passover. Then in Exodus 13, we have, Uh, the laws of the firstborn, okay, and it's in, is it Exodus 11? No, it's not, it's afterwards, it's Exodus 15. No, they're already gone, Exodus 15, the Shirat Ayam. Where is it again? One second. Okay. Here it is in Exodus 12. Okay, so here uh, God kills all the firstborn of Egypt and then the Israelites leave Egypt. Okay, that's in Exodus 12. And then in Exodus 13, after having done that, God says, Kadesh li kol b'chor peter rechem. Kadesh li kol b'chor peter kol rechem b'vnei Israel. Okay, sanctify to me. Okay, consecrate to me the <clears throat> the firstborn, the that opens the every womb among the children of Israel. And again, Adam be Hamas. So this is kind of a repetition of what we see here in Numbers, right? It's almost the same thing. Okay. Kili called bechor biyom hakoti et called bechor be eretz mitzrayim li tash di li bari ad be hema li you ani ani. So we have that here, right? This is hearkening back to this. Okay, sanctify me all the firstborn. Okay, all the firstborn among humans and animals belong to me. And second here. So then it goes into eating matzot, matzot yachel. And then here, it, starting in verse 11, Bahayaki Yivyacha, this is Exodus chapter 13, verse 11. So when I bring you into the land of Canaan, I'll paraphrase. Kol Peter Rechem Yahweh, that you shall transfer every firstborn, every opening of the womb among human beings and among animals. Okay. Uh, the scharim, the males, the firstborn males, shall be given to Yahweh. And then it goes on for non-kosher animals such as a hamor, a donkey. And then he says, then when your son asks you, why are you doing this? Why are you giving all the firstborn? <clears throat> um, to uh, to me, then you should say because I I killed all the firstborn in Egypt. One second here. And this is more than that. This is going to be a, a sign, figuratively speaking, a sign upon your hand and totafot and uh, a remembrance or jewelry between your eyes. Because with a strong with a strong hand, uh, Yahweh took us uh, out of Egypt. Okay, so so there we have back in Exodus this consecration of the firstborn to to God. And here it's mentioned again. What the heck is going on? 
<clears throat> okay. I'm going to end the study soon because it is getting kind of late. So let me try to read through. Maybe I'll just read through uh, without too much commentary. So verse 14. Why the bed Yahweh Moshe Bamidbar Sinai le more called et bene lewi le bait avotam le mishpahotam cause the harmi ben hodesh um ala tif kadem why if called the tam Moshe al pi Yahweh kasher siwa suwa wahayu ele bene lewi bishimotam gershom kahat umara umarari wa ele שמות בני גרשון למשפחותם ליבני ושמעי ובני קהת למשפחותם עמרם ויצהר עמרם נוטיס this is the so the grandson of so the son of Lewi is קהת the son of קהת is עמרם the uh, father of Lewi is עמרם so it's the same name so עמרם this עמרם is named after his let's see Father's Kahat, grandfather is Lewi, great grandfather is Omram, Omram, okay, this, this father of Aaron and Moses, okay, Waitar, Hebron, Wauziel, Uvne Merari, Nimishpochotam, Mahli, Mushi, Elehem, Mishpochota Lewi. So that's what we have here. We have just basically a family tree of the Levites. Nothing new, just a refresher, because now we're going to talk about these the uh, roles of these uh, these three clans, the three sons. Uh, uh, Lewi. Verse 21. Le Gershon, Mishpahat Ha-Livni, Mishpahat Ha-Shim'i, Elahem, Mishpahot Ha-Gershuni. U. so we just have a an account of the Gershonites. We see the Gershonites are, are camping on the west. Uh, Gershon. So Gershon is the firstborn of Lewi, right? Let's just verify that. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Ah, I'm not going to chase that. It is. Okay, so Gershon is the firstborn. One second here. Let's do it this way. Right, so Gershon. Now, isn't this thing? The firstborn of Gershon is, is I'm sorry, of Levi is Gershon. It's mentioned in Genesis forty six eleven. Oops, I the wrong chapter. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohat, and Merari. Now, what is the son? What is the name of Moshe's son? Gershon. And Eliezer. 
So the firstborn of Moses is the same, right? And let's just confirm this in the Hebrew as well. Oops, where'd we go? <clears throat> what happened here? I lost it. Okay, so give Sean. And this is Gershom. So Moses' son is Gershom. Ki Ger Haiti Sham, basically, right? And the firstborn of Levi is Gershon. I don't think a an etiology, an etymology of Gershon is given for the son of Levi, but we know it is from Moses. Okay. So uh <clears throat> So let's just look at that for one second. So if we go to where it's mentioned with Moses. So Moses talks about his sons. It's got to be around Exodus 2. No. Exodus 3. It's already the burning bush. Is it Exodus 2? Yeah, here we go. Exodus 2, 22, Tzipor gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, saying, okay, so let's look at that in Hebrew. Exodus 2, 22. Okay. So basically, Ger Sham. Okay. He caught, so Moses gave birth to a son, named him Ger Sham, because he said, I was a Ger. I was a, a, a stranger in a strange land, basically. Okay, Ger Sham. I was a I was a stranger there. It would perhaps be the etymology of Ger Sham, I'm assuming. Okay, so but the son of Levi. Uh, is Gershon. So we see here, this is Gershon. Gershon. But Moses' son is Gershom. Gershom. Levi's, Levi's son is Gershon. Gershom. Gershon. And Sean, Gershon, at least is spelled in this uh, Hebrew text, which I assume is based on the Leningrad Codex. They basically all are <clears throat> is spelled it with what's called metric selectionis, which means a long spelling. There's an extra vav in here. Gershom. It's spelled without the it's spelled without a vav, at least in this text. Okay. There's just a, a vowel over the shin over the shin, Gershom. So the names are similar, but they're not exactly the same. The son of Levi is Gershon, the son of Moses is Gershom. But it does raise the question, did so let's see. Gershom, Moshe's uh, father was Amram. Uh, Amram's father was wait a second. I confused myself. What am I doing here? What am I saying here? Amram's father uh, was Kohat, right? Genealogy of Moses. Right. So Amram, so Moses' father was Amram. Amram's father was Kohat. Kohat's father was Levi. Okay. Levi's other son was Gershom. So here's Gershom. Here over here, next to Kohat would be Gershon. So what does that make? So this is Moses' father, grandfather, great 
grandfather is Kohat. So his great grandfather's brother. So does that make him his great, his great great uncle or something like that? It was named Gershon, and here Moses' son is named Gershon. Yashon and Yashon. Okay, just thought I'd point that out. Anyway, I really should finish off here. Well, don't feed the cats now. Why not? I was going to feed them. No, no, because I want, still want to let them out for a while. Okay? They're not out. They're inside. Well, I'm going to let them out for a while. It's not even close to sunset. All right? You feed them at 8, 8.30 or so. All right? All right. Afterwards. All right? Well, Ere Shemot B'nei Gershon L'Mishpachotam L'Vnei Shim'i It's hard, Hebron, Uziel. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So now we get up to Gershon. Gershon, Mishpachat, Alivnim. Okay, we read this already, right? Didn't we? Mishkan, Yahanu, Yama. Right. Yeah, we were down to here. Okay, so we saw that the Gershoni, the firstborn. So again, if we look at the, the setup of the, of the tabernacle. Wait, excuse me for one second. Okay. Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, what are you? I don't know. Can you put it somewhere if you're really careful? Maybe. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um. All right. I should really read through without any more commentary because I have to get going. So, <laughs> all right. So, there, there we go. We're here so much more to say obviously there always is umishmeret bene gershon ba oil moed hamishkan wa oil okay we mishmeret bene gershon ba oil moed hamishkan we ha oil uh imikhsehu umasakh petakh oil moed wa kilae ha khatser wa et masakh פתח החצר אשר על המשכן ועל המזבח סביב מתערב לכל עבוד, עבודתיו. So it's just giving the roles of the Gershonim, the Gershonites, and they have the most important role, okay? So they're carrying the Mishkan, okay? The Mishkan... Uh, is... Uh, <clears throat> Mishkan is basically the, uh, the the tabernacle, right? So that inner part. So, uh, and we see that they're camped on the west. We mentioned earlier that the west is the most important part. Okay. So the Gershonim, just we saw is in the outer camp, right? Ephraim, Menashe, and Binyamin are camped on the west. Uh, they also... Uh, They're camped on the west, so the Gershonites are camped on the west as well, right? So after Moses and the and the Kohanim, who are basically guarding the entrance or at the entrance of the at the of the Ohel Moed, then I guess you could say they're the most important. But the second most important are the Gershonites, and they're the ones who are actually carrying the uh, the uh, Mishkan itself. Okay. Alrighty. The Kahat Tites. Well, the Kahat Mishpahat Ha Am Rami. Again, remember we said that one of the sons of, of Kahat was Amram. The same name as the father of uh, Moses. And Aharon, did I say Levi before? If I said Levi, I meant Aharon. I'm sorry. Well, the cat, Mishpachat Amri, and Mishpachat Yitzhari, and Mishpachat Hevroni, Mishpachat Azieli, Elehem, Mishpachot Kahati, and Mispar called Zahar, me ben Hodeshim Allah, Shimona Allah, Fimbo Shish, Mishmerit Kodesh. 
משפחות בני קהת יחנו על ירח המשכן תימנה. ונשיא בית אב לחתי אלי צפון בן עוזיאל ומשמרותם הארון והשולחן והמנורה So I'm sorry, it's really the Kohatis, they're carrying the Shulchan, the Aharon, the Aharon. So they have the most important role. And so much more to go through quickly, at least to the end of this chapter. No. Please stop. All right. I'm just going to read the end of the Parsha, and that's it. Ulimrari. Mishpachat ha-mahli. Mishpachat ha-mushi. Elahem. Mishpachot. Pikudem. Mishpachot. Zachar. Mishpachot. Mishpachot. When I see Beit Avi, Rari Tzuri Ben Avi, Avi Hayel, Al Yerach Hamishkan Yahanu Safona, Safona, verse thirty-six. U Fikudat Mishmeret Bene Marari, She Hamishkan Birichau, Ba Amudau Ana, Iv Adanem Wa Yit Yit Dotam Are. Him. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> One second. Kol pikudei halewiim asher pakad Moshe Aaron al pi hue mishpachotam kol zachar mi ben chodesh ma'al shnaim wa esrim alef. And we have here these dots over the word Aaron, which I assume again are occurring the Le the Leningrad Codex because that's where all the most Almost all, I mean, pretty much all of the Hebrew texts, modern Hebrew texts are taken from. And those are just, if I'm not mistaken, erasure marks. They have no special significance, but they've been they've been copied onto all of these texts because, uh, I guess, uh, A, to be accurate, and B, I know the rabbis give some kind of special meaning to these dots. I don't remember what it is, but they're, if I'm not mistaken, erasure marks, meaning uh, that there was some kind of mistake and something needed to be erased and corrected, uh, if I remember correctly. Okay, so. Firstborn sons redeemed. Wayomer Yahweh and Moshe. Kod kol bechor zachar livnei Israel mi ben chodesh ma'ala v'sa et mispar shemotam. So now they're counting up the firstborn males. When I count the et haliviim li, ani Yahweh tachat kol bechor livnei Israel wa et behemat behemat haliviim tachat kol bechor behemat bnei Israel. Wow, a lot to say here, but I don't have the time. So now the animals of the Levites are taken instead of the firstborn of the animals of the children of Israel. We've called Moshe Kasher Tziwa Yahweh Otok et Kol Bechor Bevne Israel. Verse 43. Why he called Bechor Zachar by Mispar Shemot Miben Chodeshma Alev, Kudem Shnai by Asrim Elef Shlosha, or Shivim Umatayim. וידבר יחווה אל משה לאמור, קח את הלוויים תחת כל בכל בני ישראל, בבני ישראל, ואת בהמת הלוויים תחת בהמתם, ואיהו לי הלוויים אני יחווה. ואת פידועי השלושה והשבעים, והמתיים העודפים על הלוויים מבכל בני ישראל, וקח את החמשת חמשת שקלים לגולת בשקל הקודש 
Kach Srim Geraha Shakil. So there's a leftover, right? So we're supposed to take the Levites instead of the firstborn. But there are too many firstborn. There are more firstborn born than Levites. So in, for so for all that extra, you give five shekels of silver. When it doesn't mention the, the uh, type of substance, it's generally assumed silver. Five shekels of silver for each one of those extra uh, firstborn that need to be uh, redeemed. Verse 49. Verse 50, so I'll just read through here. In Russia, why the bear Yahweh Moshe or El Aaron Nemor Naso et? Wait a second. I think that's the end of the Parsha because the next Parsha is Naso. So 420, see something here? Because sometimes the numbering is different. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me just see something here. No, okay, so it does go down to where to 20 where it says, okay, that's where it is. Okay, I'm gonna stop here, it's getting late and I'm tired. So, uh, there is a <laughs> but we're, we're gonna end. And I appreciate everyone who hung for the study and, and a Shavuot Tov, depending where you are in the world, and hopefully Bizarat. Yahweh, we will do it again next week. Thank you very much and Shabbat Shalom, Shavuot. Okay.